Okay, Dreamer, please. Hi guys, welcome to volume 6 of the Beginner's Guide series. Congratulations for making it this far. Now that you have learned what heroes to choose, how to build heroes, where to get proper equipment and pets, we are going to tackle the bigger concept of hero crafting and team building. Previously in volume 2, you have caught a glimpse of the important heroes for all the game modes, but why exactly are they used? I think every player, not just new and returning players, should have an understanding of how heroes work before knowing how to put together a team. So we will split this video into two main sections. In the first part, we will answer the big question, how do I know what to give a hero and learn what to take note from a hero's skill set? And in the second part, we will tackle the question, who should I put in a team for the best outcome? Note that there is no single fixed team you can use to fight through all the different modes and enemies. It will also come with experience, but not to worry, I will give you guys my personal guidelines on hero building. Different players may have their own ways and if yours differ from mine, feel free to share it in the comments for everyone to benefit too. So how do you know what to equip a hero? The three reference points you can turn to are the codex, the speed, and the skill set. From the codex, you can easily see whether a hero uses physical weapons or magic weapons simply from here, P attack or M attack. In that case, you will not end up preparing the wrong item. Of course, you may also use the elemental type as a guideline. Offensive heroes never use magic weapons, and likewise magic heroes never ever use physical weapons. Universal heroes are slightly trickier since they can use either type of weapon. Defensive heroes tend to use physical weapons with the exception of Caesar, while support heroes till date all use magic weapons. Before we go on talking about speed, I want to talk about skill set reading first because this will relate to speed later on. The first few things you need to check on a hero's skill set is whether the hero's passive or skills have any high critical or lethal multipliers, or do they have very high damage percentage figures. If these exist, then there is a high chance that your hero has the potential to be a very strong damage dealer. In that case, then you should try to build these heroes in a way so that their crit and lethal rates are very high. Hence, you would want to equip these heroes with crit and or lethal weapons, jewels and possibly traits. However, whether to use crit or lethal will depend on the extent of buffs the hero already has. If a hero has a self-increased lethal rate of 30%, then to decide if you should still equip him or her with lethal or give him or her crit instead will depend on all the factors beyond. These will include whether you have the supporting jewels, the complementary buffs other heroes on your team can provide, your masteries and guild buffs if applicable. If you realize that you can safely rely on external factors to increase a hero's crit rate to the maximum, then go ahead with lethal weapons, vice versa. Another aspect is to observe if the hero has the potential to cast status effects, especially those which are by chance and not 100%. Although you are just starting out, it is unrealistic to talk about equipping them with Mythical Awakened crit items right away, but you need to keep the Mythical Awakened weapon substats in mind because that is ultimately your end goal when you equip these heroes. Recall that Mythical Awakened crit weapons increase status effect cash rate, so if you intend for these heroes to be more effective in landing status effects, then you need to equip them with crit weapons and build from there. Then you should check carefully for special mechanic related passives or skill effects. For example, if a hero has supplementary effects on his or her basic attacks like Yonhee, Aries, and Seep, counter is a very viable option. Make sure that the hero who you want for countering has a counter rate of at least 90% using armor, jewels, traits, and even accessories if necessary. And also make sure that the hero does indeed have the highest counter rate on your team. An additional tip is to pair a lifesteal jewel to those counter heroes because this helps them sustain their HP. Another example would be if a hero is able to manipulate an enemy's awakening gauge, you may want him or her to have lower skill cooldowns so that more of the skill can be used within a shorter period of time. You also need to look at a mythical awakened hero's effect attack. If a myth hero has a very useful effect attack, Regardless of all other factors, equipping them with Mythical Awakened Speed Weapons should be the priority because those weapons increase effect attack chance. Which then brings me to talk about speed as a reference point. 
Usually, only offensive and magic heroes will be equipped with speed weapons. A big reason for this is that they have a much higher base speed than other categories of heroes, and this is important in giving you a speed advantage in PvP. So what if your team has 4 offensive heroes, who should have the speed weapon? There's two other factors to consider here, number one would be what we talked about earlier about which hero has the better effect attack. Number two would be which hero should charge their awakening gauge faster. By attacking first, that particular hero will get a head start in getting his or her awakening gauge charged, which is why sometimes you may see teams with battery setting her as the attack leader instead of other mythical awakened heroes. Remember in Volume 4 I talked about how speed plays an important role in PvP and PvE? Just to recap, you will need an attack leader on your PvP team and that attack leader must be the hero with the highest speed so that you can attack first. Meanwhile, all other units on your PvP team can be equipped with crit lethal weapons in any way you like. In PvE, every hero speed stat needs to be taken into consideration. Why so? First, the higher the hero speed, the higher the likelihood of more speed attacks performed. So you need to decide if having many speed attacks is good or a waste of time. Extra speed attacks are bad when you have a limited time to deal as much damage as possible such as in guild dungeon. Extra speed attacks can be good if they serve as a bridge while a particular skill is still on cooldown, or for a hero like Yonhi where you need her to clear adventure mobs easily. Same idea applies to giving heroes counter equipment. Are counter attacks helping you or slowing down your runs and damage per second? Remember having a counter attack hero like Ares and Seek who reduces cooldown upon basic attack is extremely crucial for you to constantly spam chain skill without delay. So in these cases, counter attacks are very very useful. Second, the speed attack order of your heroes will matter. Let me give you a scenario why manipulating speed attack order is crucial. Certain heroes like Rachel have awakened passives which are beneficial to the entire team. However, at the same time, you need Shane to charge her awakening gauge faster, and Shane uses lethal weapons since she is a DPS. So in a situation where you shouldn't have any hero with a higher speed over Shane, you either equip your support heroes with lethal or leave them bare. Why not give them crit weapons because crit animations take a longer time. So you may ask, what's the most minimal way to equip my heroes to play decently? For PvP, there is no minimal way. In fact, you have to go maximal in terms of building your items, jewels, accessories. I have gone through in great detail all the important processes in Volume 5, so be sure to refresh your memory if you're still unsure. To climb in PvP, you really need to invest a lot of time in building your equipment, and there's no way around that. But what about PvE? Let's start with support heroes in PvE. More often than not, you will simply focus on the defense of support heroes because they are there to help your main damage dealer. HP armor is the key here because you want them to have sufficient bulk and remain on the field as long as possible. Going by this logic, you probably will equip them with defense related jewels like block or PvE defense and maybe recovery skill increase or life steal. Take note that for support heroes who need to constantly be moving or cast their skills, make sure to give them sufficient status effect resistances whether via traits or accessories. And of course for PvE DPS's Velika and Shane, you must have 100% crit rate and leader rate built on them. How can this be achieved? There are many factors to consider, so my suggestion is for you to create a table like this in Google Spreadsheet and insert the numbers so that it is clearer to you. These are some samples for Shane builds. Always remember both Velika and Shane already have a base crit rate and leader rate of 10%. Amongst all these factors, I would say the most important are the external factors namely your guild buffs, masteries and support hero buffs. If these factors can support high percentages of crit rate and lethal rate, then it really lightens your load to build your DPSs. One feature to talk about when you are building your hero is the hero statistics. This feature shows you where the hero is most commonly used so that you can observe if the hero is more PvP oriented or more PvE oriented. You can even check the various combinations of weapons, armor, jewels, accessories and traits and the percentage of players who use them. Keep in mind that just because most people use a certain combination doesn't always make it the right one and the best one. You also have to consider the types of enemies face and equip your hero according to that instead. Hero building and hero usage are flexible processes. 
So to summarize, the ways of equipping heroes vary greatly between PvP and PvE. In PvP, you will need one main speed hero while the rest can be equipped with crit and lethal as you like. If there is a counter hero on your team, try to keep it to just one. As for specific jewels, traits, accessories, this will really depend on the hero you are using. Remember to check the skill sets of the heroes and consider those factors mentioned earlier. In PvE, DPS units need to be given PvE items and damage-oriented builds, while support units should be given a bulky build coupled with appropriate resistances if necessary. Now with that knowledge in hand, you need to move on to building a team. So let's start with PvP team compositions. PvP team compositions are not the same as PvE teams of course, and I guess honestly there's no fixed team or hero to recommend. It really depends on who the latest heroes are and whether older heroes can synergize with them. Sometimes top players can come up with very unique teams incorporating new and old heroes, so we are all kind of in a monkey see monkey learn situation. More often than not, in every arena season, there are 2 to 3 staples in every team, while the last 1 to 2 hero choices depend on the player's preference. And while mythical awakened heroes are preferred due to their higher stats, there are times where awakened heroes like Battery, Teal and Rudy come back to the battlefield. But this is all dependent on the current core set of arena heroes. Generally speaking, there are two main types of teams in arena, the offense oriented team and the tank team, which is heavily neglected. Nowadays, there is also potential for hybrid teams which use a mixture of damage dealers along with bulky heroes. Are there actually roles in PvP teams? I believe if you guys play PvP in other games, there are times where emphasis is placed on a healer, sometimes you need a support buffer, sometimes you need a debuffer. To be honest, in 7 Nights, these roles and jobs don't exist in PvP, mainly because PvP in 7 Nights is run on auto. So there is no control at all over skill use and in that sense, all players throw in heroes with the best skill set catered for the meta. Of course, different heroes were created for different purposes and some are indeed meant to be dealing more damage than others. This simply goes back to the earlier part of the video where we discussed how you should equip different heroes suited to their ability. All in all, my personal tip is to always focus on item building because you can then swap heroes easily when the meta changes. Unlike PvP, in the PvE team, heroes do have different roles. I believe you guys are already familiar with the terms DPS, buffer and debuffer, healer, status effect, resistance providers. However, it doesn't mean we will always require all these roles at one time. It really depends on the boss face and what skills he or she or it use. The DPS is definitely a fixed role in any PvE team, namely Shane and Velika. The next most common unit is the hero who increases physical attack or magic attack, and for that we have Eileen and Sylvia respectively. At times we have a main debuffer, and as I have highlighted in volume 2, this can either be Rachel, Chloe, Sylvia or Espada depending on the different modes. We have two remaining spots. One role is the taunter who helps to direct all attacks to himself or herself so that other heroes won't suffer too badly. Our two most popular taunters are Ares and Seek. And lastly, we could either opt for a buffer or an additional debuffer depending on your need. Lina tends to fill up the last spot because she provides massive crit rate increase and also acts as a healer. An enemy block rate reducer like Kagura, Zahara or Mist is also a possible choice. You may also choose to fill this final spot with a hero who provides certain status effect resistances or immunities for your team depending on the enemy. And you're pretty much set! So let me know in the comments how you found this video, it is one of the most interesting and rarely covered topics in the entire 7 Night YouTube scene, so I would like your feedback. If you found it useful, do give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for the final and most important episode of the Beginner's Guide series. Thank you so much and see you!